Welcome to Local Matters, featuring the places, events, and people of our South Shore towns. At PAC TV, we're your neighbors who care about and understand your communities because we live here too. I'm Julie Thompson, and let's get started. Just south of the Indian Head River and West Elm Street Bridge is Tucker Preserve, 78 acres of conservation lands that can be enjoyed by canoe or by foot, whether you have two or four. Watch this. Golden, crisp leaves falling softly from almost bare trees, lifting and falling in a hushed, gentle breeze, slowly dropping to the soft, cushioned ground, whispering and rustling a soothing sound. Coppers, golds, and rusted tones, Mother Nature's way of letting go. They fall and gather one by one. Autumn is here, summer has gone. Crunching as I walk through their warm, fiery glow, nature's carpet rich and pure that again shall grow, to protect and shield its majestic tree, standing tall and strong for the world to see. They rise and fall in the cool, crisp air. It's a time of change in this world we share. Nature's importance reflecting our own lives, letting go of our fears, and again, too, we shall thrive. Pembroke High School Thespian Troupe, number 7127, is putting on a show. It's The Music Man, presented by Special Arrangement with Music Theatre International. The story is of a fast-talking traveling salesman conning a whole town, and it's been entertaining people for decades. You don't want to miss the high school's production. It runs from November 21st to the 23rd. All shows are at 7 p.m. Check the high school's website for more details. Meditation reduces stress, controls anxiety, and enhances self-awareness. As a gift to the community, Emerald Yoga Studio provides an opportunity to explore mind and body relaxation every Monday night from 8 to 8.45 p.m. No yoga or meditation experience is required. Wear your most comfortable clothes, even your pajamas. Their goal is to help beginners feel relief for their stress and learn how to work with their bodies to feel more comfortable in their own skin. Visit their Facebook page for more details. Are llamas the new unicorn? Have you noticed? They're everywhere. Pembroke Public Library is jumping on this llama mania trend with an art event on Saturday, November 16th for ages 13 to 18. This pop-up arts school will help guide you step-by-step step in creating and painting a llama that you'll love. You'll have plenty of time for detail as this event runs from 1 to 6 p.m. Space is limited for this free workshop. Please sign up by visiting or contacting the Pembroke Library. Joseph Campbell said, If you follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while, waiting for you, and the life that you ought to be living is the one you are living. Find out how Kenny, 
Hans, and JR from Second Wind Brewing Company made their passion their business. So Second Wind started from uh, me and my two partners, Kenny and JR. Uh, originally home brewers, uh, we always had the uh, passion for home brewing. Uh, so Hans, JR and I met locally, uh, largely through the, the craft beer establishments like New World Tavern, Driftwood Public House. Uh, Hans had an apartment brewing setup. My, my best friend got me into the craft beer, um, craft beer scene and um, got me a uh, brewing kit for Christmas uh, and I pretty much fell in love with it. I wanted to learn everything there was to know about beer. And from there, we decided, the three of us clicked really well together in terms of this being a passion to pursue and a business that we thought would be profitable in this area. Uh, we've been here, we've actually started our first batch about two years ago, October. So we leased this space at Howland Street in 2016, and we built it out through uh, 2017, started brewing around Halloween. Our uh, tap room opened in May of 2018, so we've been open a little, almost a year and a half. I had gone to business school uh, with the intent of eventually opening my own company, uh, but really wanted to find something I was passionate about and realized this craft beer boom was occurring around us and I met people with like-minded interest in seeing you know, a small community brewery grow into you know, potentially a regional brand someday. So with that passion, uh, we obviously wanted to make a quality product, learn from brewing, learn from other brewers, and also learn from other sources. So we studied, we read books, uh, first step was recognizing we didn't have a lot of the skills needed to run a brewery uh, besides brewing beer. So we, we found jobs uh, locally. Uh, we worked at independent fermentations from when it opened, uh, as well as Craft Beer Cellar. So through those organizations, we had learned different aspects of the business you wouldn't know as a home brewer. Uh, none of us have actually had uh, formal brewing, um, aside from a couple classes here and there, but um, uh, mostly books and uh, basically self-taught. The series of books on malt, water, yeast, hops, uh, the tasting beer series, the draft quality manual. So we really wanted to, to be masters of the craft, uh, shy of going to a, you know, a certificate program or going to school over in Germany. Uh, we, we spent our free time uh, where we weren't working, studying, studying craft and, and brewing beer. I would say if you're thinking of starting a new career path, I'd say definitely um, experience matters and research matters. Do your research. Um, get as much experience as you can. Talk to everybody who's in the business and uh, all, that, all that helps. It makes it easier for that transition to jump from your mundane 9 to 5 to whatever, whatever you want to do for the fun of it. It's easier to answer what my role is through subtraction. Um, Hans is our head brewer, so he is here full time brewing all the batches. We brew four batches a week. Uh, I, I typically brew um, Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Um, those are usually my brew days. Uh, the other days following that are, are um, anything that might need to go on in the brew house. Um, JR comes in on the weekends and does a lot of our cellaring or cleaning. Um, I do pretty much what's left. So multiple hats are sales, marketing, advertising, procurement, distribution. I'm the delivery guy. I take the orders and um, also help shape what we brew based on what the market is looking for and work with Hans in terms of de developing what beers we want to put out next based on what trends we see coming. If I had to pick a beer to offer to a stranger that captured the essence of our brewery, it'd probably be one of our milkshake IPAs. Uh, they're kind of a controversial style in that they're not traditional, they're highly unfounded in terms of having specifications to meet, but we enjoy adding the culinary influences of our brewing into different new kind of trendy styles of beer. Our most popular is called Snowbird. We have Honey Bell Tangelos that we buy from Florida. They're only harvested in late January. We zest the peels for our Belgian style wheat beer, Howlin' at the Moon, and then we're left with this gorgeous juicy fruit. Uh, Holland at the Moon is a Belgian wit beer um, uh, brewed with orange peel, uh, coriander, and also Belgian wit yeast that gives it that hazy, um, hazy character to it. 
Um, so it's got a, it's got a, a slight citrus note to it, uh, but pretty much well balanced. So Second Wind is part of a, a community of brewers um, all over the South Shore. We actually have, I think, 10 or 11 in our South Shore Beer Club. Um, we're all very supportive of each other that we actually started a, a, a type of a guild um, to support each other. It, it kind of goes both ways when it comes to competition. Um, although we're all trying to do our best to try to outshine each other, um, we, we are very supportive of each other. Each and every one of us send each other to, to other breweries, um, things like that. Uh, we have a lot of fun with these guys. We meet once a month, not only, not only for our South Shore Beer meetings, but also um, festivals, events, things like that. We're always excited to get together and do things. It's been a long path to get here. We've probably been brewing together about seven years, uh, but now we've got our own place. This is our second wind. America's hometown is the place to be the weekend before Thanksgiving. History comes alive on the streets of Plymouth during the America's Hometown Thanksgiving Parade. Stories of our nation's history will be marching, dancing, and floating through downtown and onto the waterfront for all to enjoy. Rated the number one Thanksgiving parade by AOL Travel, this is not to be missed. For information, visit usathanksgiving.com. This year, you can watch live coverage of the parade on our PAC TV channels, Comcast 13 or Verizon 43, as we will bring you a different perspective. We will be set up on Court Street. After the parade, be sure to stay nearby because Illuminate Thanksgiving, a Plymouth 400 event, will light up the night with a celebration that focuses on young people and their ability to be that one small candle that makes a difference in the lives of many. If you can't make it, PAC TV will be capturing the beauty of Illuminate and sharing it on our channels and social media. Visit pactv.org for more information. Pickleball is a hybrid paddle sport that contains elements of tennis, ping pong, and badminton. It's an admittedly humorous name for a sport that has gained enormous popularity in the United States, especially among active adults. We joined the Plymouth Pickleball players at Stevens Field to learn more. On a warm autumn day, you may find a smiling group of people gathered at Stevens Field, dressed in workout clothes, playing a game you've probably never heard of. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. A uh, combination of tennis, badminton, uh, and even ping pong. Uh, played on a half of the size of a tennis court. And uh, kind of a natural for seniors uh, gravitating from tennis to a smaller, more controlled game. You can come out here uh, every day. Uh, we play Monday through Saturday and get a good workout, uh, meet friends. Uh, it's free, you don't have to join a health club. I'm not a health club person, so I love to be outside. Uh, so this is the sport for me. Pickleball brings people together by just enjoying each other, having fun, laughing all the time, knowing that if you make a mistake, it doesn't make any difference, that we can laugh at each other, we can meet each other afterwards for coffee. You there's sometimes no bathroom here. We can go to someone's house to use the bathroom. So it's just a great way to be together and to have fun. Uh, I'm in the best shape of my life. Somebody had a Fitbit the other day, 10,000 steps in, an, in a couple of hours, first thing in the morning. Uh, so the physical part and uh, the, the health benefits, you really work up a sweat. I I'm from Virginia and we moved up here last year and I knew no one so they have made, um, they are my family and friends now. In town uh, the recreation department has sponsored us from the beginning and so Plymouth Rec uh, website right at town or visit to town hall for their programs. We play uh, informally here at, at Stevens uh, six days a week every day but Sunday. Whether it's the sport itself or the camaraderie behind it, pickleball seems to make people feel younger, healthier, and more connected to their communities. You just show up. We have extra paddles. We have balls. Uh, you just show up. We'll give you a lesson. Just come on down and join us.
While you're in downtown Plymouth for America's hometown celebration, join a special workshop at Anki Hand's print studio and gallery to raise money for the Plymouth Area Coalition for the Homeless. Silk screens will be prepped with artwork expressing gratitude, joy, and thanks, and each print you make will be one of a kind. There is absolutely no experience needed for this workshop, and it's fun for all ages. The date is Saturday, November 23rd from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Screen printing guidance, metallic gold ink, and an 8 by 10 inch printmaking paper will be provided for you. For more details, visit the Inky Hands website. Habitat for Humanity is a nonprofit housing organization working in local communities across all 50 states and in more than 70 countries around the world. Their vision is of a world where everyone has a decent place to live. But how does Habitat's homeownership program work? We invited Amy Belmore, the Director of Development for Habitat for Humanity of Greater Plymouth on set to fill us in. We're so pleased to have on set today Amy Belmore, who is the Development Director for Habitat for Humanity of Greater Plymouth. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Habitat for Humanity. People know you build houses. Yes. But there's so much more. So can you talk a little bit about the mission and what you do and Certainly. Whole nine yards. Certainly, yes. So absolutely. A lot of people do recognize the name and what the work of Habitat for Humanity, which is an international organization, but there are hundreds, thousands of affiliates around the world. And here in our area, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Plymouth, we cover six towns, including Plymouth, Carver, Kingston, Middleborough, Lakeville, and Plimpton. Okay. And so within those towns, our mission, as is the mission of, of Habitat in general, is to provide decent, affordable housing for those families, low-income, moderate-income families who struggle to find adequate housing that is safe and secure for their families. And so a couple things come to mind. One is how are you funded? Sure. And two, how do, you, how do people get to be part of this lottery? Oh, sure. So, so in terms of the application process, when, when we know we're going to start a build, we start off with multiple public meetings to make sure that the community is aware. We talk to um, those in housing agencies, in the case of our veterans builds, which we have two happening right now where we're building specifically for veterans. We're in touch with veteran service officers mm -hmm. in the area to make sure word is getting out to that population. Um, certainly media and press to, to get the word out. And we hold multiple public meetings. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, those who attend can decide if they want to apply. And then it's a multi-phase application process that starts with you know, paperwork and, and yep. gathering information yep. and gathering employment history mm -hmm. and so forth. And, and that is, is vetted. And then um, there's a committee, a specific committee of volunteers, yep. Yep. some board members, some non-board members, but a committee that is, it's, a, it's called Family Selection Committee. Okay. Um, and they are going through the applications and taking them through the phases. Okay. And so in order to be eligible for a habitat home, you need to be kind of the criteria is you're either in inadequate housing, too small, yep. or unsafe, mm -hmm. or you're paying more than 50% of your income towards housing, leaving not, yep. not a lot for everything <laughs> right, else right. you need to live. Right. So, so the actual process includes um, going to people's existing homes, mm -hmm. confirming yep. that it's meeting that criteria. Exactly. And then there, there are in-person interviews. Sure. And then the final stage brings it down. So the application's pool is being whittled down oh, as you absolutely. go. absolutely, yeah. And then the final um, handful yeah. it's, is done by a blind vote. And that must be, oh, it must be hard. Yes, uh, it must be, it's it's so hard. my understanding. I mean, I've never been involved yeah. personally, but, but very hard, oh, very absolutely. hard. Especially yes. if you have all six finalists who totally qualify. Generally, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Now, but, as far as the land that you build on and actual paying for the construction of the, of the yeah. home, how, how does that happen? So it depends on the situation. You know, we certainly um, receive funds. Sometimes we receive funds from CPC in mm -hmm. the individual towns that we're working yep. with. We'll get grants. Um, we certainly do our own private fundraising as yep. well. Um, in the case of the three homes, we're building three homes in Plymouth right now. Mm -hmm. The town of Plymouth, um, uh, through a town, a town meeting vote, um, gave us the opportunity to purchase that land for a dollar. Um, oh, I was just going to say, isn't yeah. that wonderful? Yeah. Because they, they, you know, they're, they're increasing their affordable housing inventory by Absolutely. us building there, which yep. they're required to do. Yep. And then um, some of the, that other land that's in the surrounding area um, will go into conservation. Oh, that's wonderful. So, that's a win-win. So, yeah, yeah. So there's multiple ways in which um, we, we handle the, the funding associated with the land acquisition. Um, Could a private citizen donate? Land yeah, to that, that's another. Yes. Okay. And they have. Okay. And they have. That's actually the case in Kingston. So we're building three in 
Plymouth right now and one in Kingston. Yep. So four simultaneously, more than this affiliate has ever done. That's great. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, and that Kingston lot was a donation from oh, that, a private individual. That's awesome. Yep. Now, since these are all built by volunteers. Yes. Uh, total volunteer workforce. With the only oh, the well, volunteer of, work of the employees of Habitat. Well, no, it's actually not the employees of Habitat that necessarily, but we do bring in professionals. They volunteer their time. Okay. But like plumbers and electricians, yep. things that need certified licensed work Absolutely. is being done by certi certified licensed professionals. Sure. You know, by and large, they're either giving pro bono time or discounted time. Uh, yeah, thoroughly you know, that discounted, kind of time. absolutely. Yeah. But all of the, um, the, all of the other building, uh, you know, the, the framing, the yeah. siding, the painting, yep. the, the, all sorts of, you know, the sheet rocking, yeah. all of that is happening with- Both volunteers. Lay volunteers. And all the people that are getting the homes that have been selected, yep. they have to do 250 hours? Yes, that's exactly right. Towards. All adult homeowners, yep. all adults living in, in the home have to put in 250 hours. We call them sweat equity hours. Yeah. That's a habitat term. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, they're out there building right alongside our core of volunteers. And yep. if for whatever reason they, they're not able to physically build like that, they can they can put their hours in other ways to in, help you know help, help in the office yep. or in our restore. Yep. You know, the restore is yep. is a great arm of the operation as well. And so, there's lots of ways they can now, help. Most of the builds are generally done on weekends. Yeah, we're out every Saturday, yep. um, and we will be continuing right through the fall and the winter. Right. So um, that, of course. You, you don't build a house as quickly Correct. when you can't have, Correct. you know, seven days a week, have a crew there. Right. So uh, what's the time frame, basically? Right. How long does it take to build a house? They generally say about a year. So okay. we have, you know, our construction supervisors are those in the trades. They're, they're contractors themselves. Yep. So they're working their day jobs during the week, Absolutely. their, their yep. regular jobs. And then they volunteer their mm -hmm. time and their mm -hmm. skill and talent on Saturdays. And then, yeah, you don't, you don't necessarily know how many volunteers are going to come on a given Saturday or what kind of skills they're going to bring yeah. or what kind of pace they're going to work yep. at. So it, it definitely is not a traditional Absolutely. home building experience. But and yet, and yet what they get out of it. And, and we, um, I know we interviewed a number of volunteers for one of those stories we did. You did a fantastic job, by the way. Oh, well, well thank you. But it was them. I'm, I mean, the, the camaraderie and the spirit, the, it, it was so palpable yeah. and it was so genuine. Those people love what they're doing. They do love what they're doing, and they're very passionate about it. And I think, you know, what drives them and what drives Habitat in general is, is knowing that you're making transformative change for these families. You know, that's not going to just affect them living there right, you know, today, tomorrow, or next year. Right. But this is generational change. You know, Absolutely. for children across these four homes, we have nine children involved. Mm -hmm. And they're going to learn better. They're going to grow Absolutely. better. They're going to be socially, you know, yep. involved with their their friend network yep. in a different way and yep. that'll help them yep. in life and ultimately will lead to better productivity. Exactly. So. And this is their home for life. Yeah. Well, it is. They do have the ability to sell their home okay. should they want to. It's not been our experience with any of the homes that we've built. No one has sold their home okay. because quite frankly, it will always, that the homes always stay in, in uh, their affordable. Families. No, they, they stay in the affordable housing Pool, um, uh, pool for the town. Okay. So it would be difficult to sell your home and then turn around and buy something that exactly. was exactly right. Unless you had a you know ha had a really nice job change or right, something right. like that. Uh, yeah. Your life experience changed. Right. Have you ever seen a family where the kids grew up and then the kids took over the home? Um, you know, I think that actually may be in the works right now with, cool. with one of the families that we had awarded a home years, years ago, ago. You know, and That's they really cool. definitely yeah. you know, we've had stories where. You know, they, a toddler started out, off in that home, and he's now j joined the Marines and yeah. is doing yeah. really well. And Isn't that wonderful? So, um, so yeah, so they it certainly is their home for life. We want yeah. we want them to stay there of for course. life, but yep. they don't have to. They sure. have the ability yep. to move on. Yep. It's just they they can't um, they can't flip it. Okay. You know. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, if people want to volunteer, get involved. How do they how do they get in touch? We are always looking for volunteers, and so if they go to our website, which um, I'm sure will be on the screen, yeah, um, hfhplymouth.org, um, there's uh, right there on the home page is a button that you can click and find out all the information okay. about how you can sign up to build. Yep. Um, and the dates of our builds are yep. right there listed. Yep. You can select the ones that yep. you want to choose, Excellent. and if if there are skills that are not building related, but maybe you want to help with office yep. work or, or fundraising or right. marketing. Or, or bringing or the lunches. Lunches. And, and, and I'm sure that's part of it, right? It's so a you're huge working part. the whole day, you, you need water, you need lunches. Yep. Yeah, we actually yeah. have a whole volunteer core for lunches alone. That's great. So, that's great. Yeah. Well, so thank you so much. Thank you. We learned a lot about Habitat for Humanity. Thank you, Julie.
This is a simply wonderful organization and watch for our upcoming feature on the four very worthy families who will be moving into new homes soon. For many seniors, the time comes when it's necessary to downsize, which can be both emotionally and physically stressful. The Duxbury Senior Center is offering a free program on November 20th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. that can help guide folks through this downsizing process. Seniors can learn what they should know from experts that they can trust, the steps to sell, where to go, market trends, they'll all be discussed. Questions will also be answered. There will be refreshments and a door prize for this Q&A panel led by real estate leaders Sally Redmond and Chris Swim. RSVP at the number below. The Duxbury Art Association's 47th Annual Craft Showcase celebrates 70 of New England's most gifted artisans. This juried event of all handmade items includes a gourmet food court, fine crafts, and artisan goods from a wide range of local talent, including young artists. The art, crafts, and incredible edibles will be displayed at Duxbury High School on November 23rd through the 24th. This year's Sunday Salon Series at the Duxbury Free Library kicks off on November 17th from 2 to 4 in the Merry Room. The book, Mob Town Massacre, which is about our divided nation plunged into the War of 1812 and a young editor named Alexander Hansen, who risked his life to defend a newspaper that dared express unpopular views, will be highlighted. Author and town resident Josh Cutler will be there to talk about his book and that centers on the themes that reverberate even today. Stick around after the talk for Josh to sign your personal copy. Registration is required. Registration is open for winter swim lessons at the Percy Walker Pool. Prepare your child for next summer's fun with preschool through level three swim instruction, running from November 16th through December 21st. Classes are offered on Monday and Saturday mornings. Visit the Facebook page for more details. Building a practical budget and sticking with it can be a difficult task and one of the most challenging aspects can be determining wants versus needs. What's the best way to ensure needs are met while still leaving room for wants? To gain insight into creating your own budget, join Christopher Eklund from Powder Point Wealth Management for Building a Budget, Wants versus Needs. This Saturday, November 16th program begins at 11 a.m. at the Adams Center. It is the first in a series focusing on personal finance literacy for adults and teens at the Kingston Public Library. This program is free, but registration is required. Visit the website for more details. Bring your kids to a free Thanksgiving-themed story time and craft making at the Kingston Collection on Tuesday, November 19th. Meet in the sitting area in front of Macy's from 10 to 11 a.m. Listen to a few stories read by Victoria from Macaroni Kid and bring your child home with his or her very own craft to help your family celebrate the season. This is not a drop-off event. Parents or guardians are required to stay with their kids at all times. State Representative Kathy Lenatra is now holding office hours at the Kingston Council on Aging every Monday from 9 to 11 a.m. Stop by and have a conversation regarding your questions and concerns about state taxes, unemployment insurance, the health connector, state licensing, or other issues that Representative Lenatra may be able to assist you with. Call the Council on Aging for more information. Virtual reality, or VR, has been gathering momentum in recent years, and we now have access to a wide range of immersive experiences and virtual worlds. Every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., stop into the teen room at the Kingston Public Library to experience virtual reality for yourself. Go to space, visit the ocean, or play one of the other fun games. Library visitors under 18 must have parental permission, but ages nine and up are welcome. Contact Mike at the Kingston Public Library for more information. Local Matters is a production of the local scene of PAC TV. If you'd like to watch this show again or explore other community stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Local Scene. Follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook to keep updated on new content and the ways that we shine a light on you. From all of us at PAC TV, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.